So John, uh, prior to the passage of Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, there weren't a lot of corporations who uh, disclosed a great deal of detail or had a great deal of transparency about what they were paying executives. Uh, nor did a lot of these corporations in, eagerly invite uh, shareholder input uh, to their decisions on executive compensation. Well, why have corporations been so reserved about disclosing this information? Well, first off, I'd say that uh, as early as 1992, corporations began to disclose more about compensation. And then, of course, with Sarbanes-Oxley and, and other acts, the, the disclosure requirements have become more specific and more comprehensive. Um, I think the reluctance stems in part from not wanting to talk about a very complicated subject. Uh, the question of how much is the right number is a pretty hard, pretty hard question to answer. Mm -hmm. You know, is it is it a hundred thousand, a million, ten million? How do you say what the right number is? Uh, hard one to answer. But uh, more than that in order to talk specifically about how you came to decisions about the compensation of the entire C-suite, uh, you have to talk about a fairly complex set of performance criteria that the board and the CEO have for the company. It's generally not just earnings per share growth, generally not just return on X, generally not just even shareholder return. It's generally a set of a half a dozen indices of performance, which can be fairly complicated and the implications of which are not straightforward. And uh, I think the presumption on the part of the Board Compensation Committee and the outside board members of a major company is a uh, difficult topic, um, not something easy to understand if it's not something you're doing frequently. And frankly, I don't want to tell my competitors exactly what I use to measure my performance. I don't want them to know what I'm indexing. Mm -hmm. Well, the disclosure rules make it imperative that companies put that information on the table. And uh, so that's sort of opening the kimono in a way that, that uh, many boards and many C-suites would rather not do. Mm -hmm. so Don, what's your view on this issue of detailed transparency? I think transparency is good in theory, um, but perhaps not so much of a cure-all as some people might think, particularly where, as John points out, you're looking at very complicated um, disclosures and unless you are very, very educated and diligent about understanding what's going on, whether you are, uh, say, a shareholder uh, wanting a say on pay and whether you're an institution, in, institutional investor looking for say on pay, it's difficult to understand. And so you might say no when you really mean yes. Or again, as, as John mentioned, it's 1992, more disclosure actually meant a kind of race to the top. We usually hear the phrase race to the bottom, but if I know that so-and-so in, in my industry is getting you know, $10 million, then I want $12 million, because I know that guy, and uh, I want more. Mm. And so it, it began a race to the top, and so again, transparency may not be the answer uh, to all problems. In some sense, it's good in theory, but not always in practice. Maybe the boards were wise to just leave it be.